In Douglas, Massachusetts, on July 4th, 1816, Willis Walker and Ruth Buffum welcomed their newborn son, Hiram. In 1832, at age 16, Hiram Walker had dropped out of school to work as a clerk in a dry goods store. By age 22, Hiram Walker had arrived in Detroit, Michigan, where he continued to seek his fortune in the grocery trade. In only a short time, Hiram Walker had constructed a small yet successful vinegar factory at 126 Woodbridge Avenue. It wasn't long before Hiram Walker decided to increase his small fortune by entering into the liquor industry. Since the early 1800s, long before colas and other soft drinks, fruit juices and even coffee and tea, whiskey was the main beverage of pioneers. Whiskey was often made locally and would only cost 25 cents a gallon to produce. Coffee breaks for laborers were actually whiskey breaks. Most people of this period also believed in the medicinal value of whiskey. In Detroit, Michigan, in the year 1854, Hiram Walker had successfully bottled his first barrel of liquor. Unfortunately, Hiram Walker and anyone else who was involved with liquor during this period saw their business ventures come to an end. Men and women everywhere were crying out for a ban on alcohol, creating the first temperance movements. Temperance movements were mostly led by women who were trying to enforce temperance laws. These women and men were bringing to light the abuses of alcohol that had been taking place across the United States. Issues that were being addressed were whiskey consumption, social problems, public drunkenness, and domestic abuse. Temperance movements were becoming more and more prominent, and by 1854, the same year that Hiram Walker produced his first barrel of liquor, the main law had reached Detroit. The main law of 1854 managed to close some retail liquor outlets and saloons, and by 1855, 12 U.S. states had adopted complete and total prohibition. Because of the main law in Detroit, Hiram Walker needed to change his profession began selling liquor illegally or flee to another state or country where prohibition was not an issue. For Hiram Walker, the plan had been to move across the Detroit River to a place that had once been inhabited by Ottawa natives led by the great chief Pontiac. This land that had once been hunted on, lived on and fought for by the Ottawa natives was about to become one of the fastest growing communities in Ontario. Hiram Walker decided to move to this area located beside Windsor, Ontario because of the potential it provided him to sell liquor. Canada did not enforce prohibition during this period, therefore Hiram Walker could make and sell as much liquor as was possible. By 1855, the Great Western Railway had been completed. This new addition stretched from Windsor all the way to Niagara River. This was the only direct link east towards London, Hamilton, Toronto, Kingston, Montreal and Portland. It is in this location where Hiram Walker would make his millions and where Canada's most famous whiskey would be created. This place would soon be called Walkerville. The creation of Walkerville began in 1858. On March 1, 1869, with the creation of a post office in Walkerville, the area was given the official recognition as a town by the Canadian government. The Windsor Electric Railway originated with Richard Bangham, a Windsor Street Commissioner who was inspired while on a trip home to England in 1872. This was the first time an electric car was introduced in Canada. In 1870, after only 12 years, Hiram Walker and Sons became the biggest operation of its kind in Canada. Hiram Walker envisioned a model town that would be the envy of not only the region, but the continent. With this dream, Walker bought more land and built more homes for his employees, as well as having established and provided free public utilities. In 1870, Hiram Walker built the first St. Mary's Church. Hiram Walker supported St. Mary's from 1874 to 1899. Walkerville had street lights, paved streets, a water pumping station, running water, a police force and a fire department, 
all of which were provided at Hiram Walker's expense. For 24 years, up until 1880, Hiram Walker had been commuting from his home in Detroit through Windsor to Walkerville. Tired of this time-consuming journey, Hiram Walker leased the ferry and built docking facilities at the distillery in Walkerville, as well as on his Detroit property at the foot of Walker Street. This was the beginning of Walkerville and Detroit Ferry Company, which continued to operate until 1942. In 1882, the population of Walkerville was approximately 600. All of these citizens were employees of the Hiram Walker and Sons Distillery. By 1888, Hiram Walker opened the Lake Erie and Detroit Railway. By 1894, the railway reached Leamington, St. Thomas and Port Stanley. The Ford Motor Company of Canada had built their very first Canadian automotive plant in Walkerville on November 2, 1904. Also in 1904, Edward Chandler Walker, the second son of Hiram Walker, provided the funds for the construction of his new home, which was to be called Willisted Manor. Willisted Manor was finished in 1906 and was designed by Albert Kahn. Albert Kahn, sometimes called the architect of Detroit, was hired by Hiram Walker and later his sons to design many buildings, homes and neighborhoods. Within Walkerville, the architectural firm of Mason and Rice also worked along with Albert Kahn to help design some of the structures in Walkerville. When building the theater, it straddled the town line with half the building being located in Windsor and the other half being located in Walkerville. In 1895, at age 79, Hiram Walker's health was diminishing and he honorably stepped down. Hiram Walker had left all of his holdings to his three sons. However, before he resigned his position in 1892, Edward Chandler Walker took over the reins as president of the Walkerville Brewery. This was not a big change for the company. Edward Chandler Walker guided the brewery with the same enthusiasm as all his ventures. The Walkerville Brewing trademark was Canada's first beer trademark. It was used from 1890 until 1945. In 1895, Stephen E. Griggs, a childhood friend of Edward Chandler Walker, took over the managerial responsibilities of the United States Walkerville Breweries. In 1897, Stephen E. Griggs took over the management of the main plant in Walkerville. Later in 1905, Stephen E. Griggs became the managing director and vice president of the brewery and in 1908, he had become director of Hiram Walker and Sons. Unfortunately for Hiram Walker and Sons Limited, 1919 to 1933 was the era of prohibition in Ontario. A man named Eli Peck LeBlanc used to watch the ships during the 1920s cross the river. In the evenings, he sat on his front porch watching and listening to the rum running noises. In 1927, during Prohibition, many breweries went bankrupt. Out of the 44 breweries that existed, only 15 survived and a Walkerville brewery was one of them. This was due to the creativity that the distillery used to move its product over the border even while American Prohibition continued, helping to make Detroit one of the wettest cities in the USA. In 1939, Walkerville Brewery branched out into foreign markets including Jamaica, Trinidad, Barbados and the British West Indies. On September 15, 1956, a statement from the Canadian Brewery's head office in Toronto announced the end of the Walkerville Brewery, which was still producing more than 100,000 barrels per year. In 1995, brewing re-established itself when Karen Plunkett and husband Michael Plunkett purchased an old Canadian club blending house, which was located on the Argyle Road. 
In December of 1998, the first initial delivery of Walkerville Lager was delivered to the old Victoria Tavern located in Walkerville. In 1935, Walkerville amalgamated into Windsor 